Hey everybody, I'm Chris Metzler here, one of the programmers with the Green Film Festival San Francisco. Uh, if you had a chance to kind of take a look at the catalog or watch some of our films, you know that we like to choose some of the most uh, interesting, irreverent, and just cool films from around the world and ones that are particularly thought-provoking. Um, you've just had a chance to see the really lovely uh, film Conceiving Our Future, and we're lucky enough to have the director here, uh, Annie panzek Boat. How are you doing, Annie? I'm doing well, Chris. Thanks for thanks for having me here. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, it was a cool film to kind of, uh, you were actually one of uh, the earliest films that we programmed for the festival. Um, had ran across it and just thought it was really special. And so uh, glad things that worked out. Um, what was the kind of the kind of genesis for the idea of the film and um, decided to kind of pick up the camera and tell it? I first started when the new census data came out, which was in 2021. And I was listening to a podcast and had, um, you know, had learned that young people were not having children as often. And I was frustrated by the podcast because they were listing all sorts of reasons except for climate dread. And, um, you know, I had just kind of been starting to have this conversation with my partner. We had just moved to California and experienced, you know, like the Orange Day and the wildfires. And I thought that mainstream media was getting it wrong, that a lot of young people were think were certainly not having children, but um, that they were not factoring in like the climate crisis as one of the reasons. And then uh, how did you kind of, uh, what um, once you kind of knew the kind of issue and that there were kind of um, these interesting ways, was there kind of an aesthetic approach that you wanted to kind of tell that, you know, uh, for it to kind of resonate with audiences? Definitely, yeah. I wanted to find, you know, I wanted to find a family that could um, explore this theme, you know, between a couple and their parents. And, you know, I, I'm a former journalist, so I, you know, just like had my journalist instincts, just like email a bunch of listservs and just start having lots of phone calls with with women, with young women who were thinking about this. And um, I came across Gem and Isabella, their, their sister actually put me in touch with them because she was on a listserv I emailed. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, they, they're, they're from a family that is very, very loving. They, they kind of live on the same property as their parents in Oregon. Um, but, um, you know, as you see in the film, the, the parents don't necessarily agree with their decision. And I thought that that would be, would create a really interesting conflict in the film. And it's something I also related to because, you know, my parents are progressive and loving and understand what is, why I might be considering this, but, um, you know, there was, there was certainly a generational divide as I continued to have this conversation with people in my own family. And I and, wanted to reflect that in the film. <laughs> were there any, um, you know, challenges on getting, you know, everybody on board? Because obviously when you kind of open yourself up uh, to kind of telling these stories and, you know, where there be these kind of inherent tensions within, you know, you know, family, um, did, did they see the film as a tool to like, you know, have these deeper conversations or did they see it more of an art project or like, you know, why do you think they decided to be part of the film? I think that um, they understood film, you know, they, they fortunately are from Ashland, Oregon, that, that also hosts a film festival. So they sort of come from a, you know, an arts background where they understood what I was trying to do. Um, and I think they, they, you know, we, the first night we, we spent with them, we started talking about this, but we didn't have any cameras and we were, mm. it was January, 2022. So um it was pretty like heavy covid times so we were doing yeah. everything outside so you know the fire kind of becomes a motif but the fire was also <laughs> just to keep us warm because we were all outside social distancing um and you know we had this conversation with them and i think that my partner was there with me he was he's like listed as an associate producer of the film and he was also just like carrying equipment around and, and also <laughs> i had another friend um, you know, and we were, I think we were just kind of being honest with them. We were like, these are conversations we're having with our parents. And I think, you know, because we were able to like really all warm up to each other in that way. Um, the next night when we went back and filmed that scene again, um, I think it was, you know, it was, they were on board and I, I hope it was, you know, raw and relatable. Very nice. Um, you know, over the course of kind of, um, 
you know, crafting the film, was there anything that kind of, you know, since you were already kind of like familiar with the issue in some different ways, was there anything that surprised you through the conversations that happened? I think that the interview with Isabella's mom, um, what Joan was, was probably the most surprising to me because um, she had, she was very into the whole filming idea. So she was around a lot kind of the whole weekend and she was putting on a front as if she was the most understanding parent, you know, mm. um, Isabella's dad was also there and Jem's mom, Nina was also there and, and her, um, Nina and, and Isabella's mom, Isabella's dad were a little bit more um, vocal in that fire pit conversation and Joan was a little bit quieter. And then, but when I did ask Joan, you know, she said, I, and she said, I, I wish, I hope that both of my daughters do have children eventually. And I hadn't heard that from her. And, you know, like, you know, you get like the, the teary eyes from the mom who's imagining not only that she's not gonna have grandkids, but I think the bigger fear for them was like feeling like their children were going, they were gonna not be there one day and their children were gonna get old without having, you know, a child that was gonna take care of them. And yeah. it wasn't it wasn't really something I had um, seen and, um, you know, it, it maybe hit a nerve in me. Yeah, well, it's a really beautiful film. I, uh... Have you had, a, I assume uh, the folks in the film have had a chance to see it and do they have any responses? And also is there kind of a postscript of what's happened since then? Um, they, of course they've, they've had a chance to see it. Um, I think that they, you know, feel like we, we um, kind of depicted the weekend um, well, and, you know, everyone keeps asking me if they've changed their minds, not to my knowledge, they are <laughs> still, you know, at least, at least, um, <laughs> Publicly, they're still not having children, but you know, I've recently just gotten married and have a new appreciation for conversations you difficult conversations and decisions you have to make. You know, not only yourself but with a partner and um, having to navigate that. But as of right now, I don't think they are having children, and um, still they're, they're you know they're doing well and living in Oregon. Cool. Well, thank you again for making the film, and uh, you know, obviously, just grateful everybody in the film for being able to kind of open themselves up and have a kind of a discussion that. Um, you know, that many of us should have. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks again.